What's up guys, Jordan Hardy here, boxing reporter. You don't have to just be a professional fighter to use Victor Conte's fighter training sack. I use it every day when I'm working out in the gym. Stay fit. I'm Jordan Hardy and I'm Snack Strong. How you feel? Back in New York. After what, four or five months? Three months. Three months, right? Yeah. All good though. Yeah, a little bit tired. Look slimmer. Um, more boxing focus. Nice. Yeah, more boxing focus, muscle memory and stuff like that. Mm. But it's all good. How was the experience in Saudi Arabia yesterday? Nice and warm. I mean, hospitality was nice as well. I'm a frequent traveler to the Middle East as well, so it's kind of like most Middle Eastern countries. But it was nice, as you said, when you kind of know people there to organize things. Eddie and the team have things organized, so it was a smooth trip. Mm. Does it feel a little bit like a hometown advantage for you? Since you go back there a lot? That's quite interesting. Not so much hometown advantage, but where I've been there before, it's not new to me. So you're kind of familiar with certain things and different aspects of a country. So yeah, where I've done a lot of tra traveling in my boxing career, I appreciate and respect people's cultures and values, you know what I mean? Seeing um, Ruiz yesterday for the first time since she had tough loss, what was, the, what was the feeling, the emotion, what was that? He's calm. I don't hate the man. You know, he come in the ring and done what he had to do yeah. as a challenger. So you've got to give the man his credit and his respect. Ultimately, now I'm on the other side of the fence and I've got to go in there and do what I've got to do. So I don't want to overcomplicate the situation. I'm going to simplify it and just, you know, do what I had to do 22 times out of the 23 fights I had. My, uh, my blueprint worked and the 23rd time I had a little glitch in the matrix. And then uh, we'll get it right and we'll go again. What do you take from the loss? Um, as I said, like lifestyle stuff, you know, just things in my own life that I need to kind of fix up, straighten out. I always say, you're good in life, you can go to work as a good uh, employee. You're good in life, you can be a good father. You're good in life, you can be a good husband or wife. So when I get these things straightened out, then I go to camp, I come to the fight as a good fighter and I take them belts. Do you feel the pressure is even on both of your side for you to become a um, unified champion again as well as him trying to keep the belts? Yeah, 100%. And you know what's interesting is that I'm not hearing about no other fighter right now. Gotcha. You know? Yeah. I'm hearing about Ruiz and that's what's important. So that's the blessing as well. Okay. Anthony, do you feel in a way that pressure was like lifted off your shoulders and it was like a big like, Oh, okay, like now, like the undefeated's gone. I don't have to worry about undefeated, undefeated, and, and all this other stuff. It's interesting that you ask that because when I watch all the fighters from the past, and that's who you'll appreciate and respect, that's why we're all here because of the past. I, you understand, hang on a minute, he took a loss, he took a loss, he took a loss. Then you look at it today, and from the era of Mayweather, you think, damn, that, that O is the most important thing, which it is, it is not losing. But now, when I listen to certain things, and before it was all about, their motivational videos I listen to in the morning is all about if you fail, you gotta get up. You get knocked down nine times, you gotta get up. And I used to think, Psh, they ain't talking about me. <laughs> I'm on a winning streak. But now you start understanding it a little bit more, what it takes to come back. So even though I don't talk about losing as, it's a, as if it's a good thing, I understand now it can happen. And it's not about staying down, it's how you kind of pull yourself back up. Even when the whole world is against you and no one believes in you no more. You pull yourself back up and you climb to the top again, no matter how long it takes. What it's a liberating thing though, isn't it? What positive things do I take from it? Yeah. Uh, it gives us more like um, openness with the team, you know, which is important. I've got my strengths as well. My team teach me a lot of things, but if one thing's working, I'm going to go in there and do it every time, mm -hmm. every time. But I believe that when you go to war, you need more tools in your box than just one thing or two things, and that's been working. So. That time it didn't work, I've now got to go and sharpen my other tools that I've been kind of leaving to rust. And uh, even though it's a short amount of time, that's why he said I've trimmed down because nothing else was more important to me in this three months than sharpening the tools that I left out of the box. Rather than just coming in strong and fit, mm -hmm. you would have just known I would have been working on the same things I have been. But you notice a change because I've been working on certain aspects. In, in regards to the weight, what weight are you trying to go fight night? I've never really looked at my weight for fight night. Okay. It's more of a feeling. How do I feel, you know, inspiring? That's the ultimate preparation for a fight. So um, I've never really looked at, oh, I need to be this weight. But uh, for a wheeze, I'll only go off of how I feel when I get the right sparring in and I can tell my coach, oh, this is how I'm feeling. Um, and then we'll figure out the weight. Uh, once the the training adapts to it. What kind of support did you receive after the loss? Because it's easy to, you know, 
throw darts, keep a man down after he loses, throw names and things like that. Can you speak on the positive support that you received after the loss? The positive, res uh, the positive response was quite interesting. Um, you get a lot of messages, you know, <laughs> a lot of support. And my boxing or family and friends? Or family, just... family, family, friends and boxing, mm -hmm. some boxing. I don't kind of, I don't I'm never really like needed my ego boosted anyway when I'm winning. So when I lost, I never really needed anyone to kind of pick me up. So I never kind of asked to be like cushioned when I fall. I just asked to be tougher when I fall. Mm. So I never really needed anyone to kind of be there to pick me up. So the response is the response, isn't it? Go again, champ, go again. But for me, I know where I'm at and that's all that matters, I think. Anthony, did you notice yesterday that, that Ruiz looked heavier? Sorry? You saw Ruiz yesterday, did he look heavier to you? Not necessarily, Reed's a big boy anyway. And I see that, you know, the bigger they are, the harder they punch. He's got a certain style that he just needs his feet planted to land a good shot. So the heavier he is, the better he is, I think. And uh, I think this training camp will be based around, as I said, being fitter, being quicker. My training camp will be based around being better and being more slick. Is there one thing that you specifically worked on in, in camp, maybe that you haven't in the past, you know, X's and O's wise? Ooh. This is a camp in general. Um, go into the camp already, already ready. I could spar now. What did we spar the other week? Ten, was it ten rounds? Yeah, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, ten rounds in the bank. So you said spar. Yeah, but I'm saying it's not like um, um we've got to wait seven weeks into camp and think, alright, am I ready to do six to eight? Okay. You know, we're doing ten, eight to ten, ten to twelve. So yeah, people camp right now sparring with you. The gym we train at, there's always heavyweights lurking, so it's always good to kind of get in it, you know? <laughs> it was in the short notice that we had. Now, I remember, you know, I've, I've seen Marie's more this week than I will in the whole build-up to the last fight, so. <laughs> you know, it, it, was, it was last time, but it's all good now. Um, we have to get it right. But do you, you need right. somebody to mimic him now? Hundred percent, hundred percent, hundred percent. Anthony, was that a uh, lucky punch comment being blown out of proportion? That, I think like what I've learned. So I took a little picture with um, one of my friend's musician, his ex, in the gym, and it gets blown out of proportion. Like, oh, what's he doing with her? But we were working on a shoot. But then what we, me and him, spoke about. I said, it's the blogger's job to blog. It's the social media guys job to make good social content. It's the internet guy's job to make clickbait. So people take how they want, but the punch that landed for me was a perfect punch from the gods. It just landed in the <laughs> right place at the right time when I was too gun trigger happy. And that's why I called it. I used the phrase a punch from the gods. So people can take how they want to take it. For him, it might have been something he had practiced on, but for me, it's something that I should have defended, so it got through what I'd worked on and what he had worked on, and I, that's why I call it a punch from the gods. What were you experiencing when you got hit for the first time and then getting, getting knocked down? Because we've seen you recuperate from, from Klitschko, who's a deadly a puncher, stronger puncher in the sense. So yeah. what were you experiencing? Um, I was gonna, we're gonna get it back, we're gonna get it back, but it's just a kind of, we call it a slippery slope from there, really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hard to get up a slope when it's just a slippery one, so it was a bit of a slippery slope, but, um, yeah. Would you talk, yeah. What do you think about the people that say you quit because you spit out your mouthpiece? So the mouthpiece comes out, you go to the corner, you know, um, I think the referee had already done his 10 count. So I'm in the corner now and then they put the mouth guard in or you rinse it and they say, you ready to fight? I say, yeah. So before my mouthpiece was even in my mouth, he had called off the fight. So I'm like looking at, like, you don't even put my mouthpiece in. How am I going, what do you want me to do? Yeah, I'm ready, walk out without my mouthpiece in. Mm -hmm. So me and him had a miscommunication. And I always said when I was winning um, in the amateurs and in the pros, I always say my job is to fight. If you, you can listen to what I say, my job is to fight, the referee's job is to ref, and the judge's job, the judge's job is to judge. So yeah, that's his call, so be it. And next time, it's not my duty to leave it down to the ref. I've got to go out there and do my business. Take it out their hands. Take it out of their hands, that's what I'm saying. It seems like you're very focused right now on Ruiz. Um, dare I say, was there any even sliver of you that possibly overlooked him? What, well, Ruiz? The first time? Um, you know, it's that confidence. You know what you're good at. You know what you're capable of doing. So that was it, really. You could kind of see from the, from the swagger in the ring, hand down, moving around. Give Boom. Him the belts. Yeah, just they're heavy as well, bro. I've been, you know what I mean? For my 16th fight, I've been carrying them belts <laughs> early on in my career. Would you do that different if you could do it again? Would you let him touch those belts? Yeah, because I'll say this is that 
no issue or no small circumstance in a man's life to change his character. Mm. That's what I call like two-faced. I am that I am mm -hmm. and take me for how you want. Mm -hmm. You know, some people may not do it and I'll tell them stick to who you are. If yeah. I would give my belts, I'm not telling everyone to, but for me to do it, you got to take me for how I am and how I handle business. That's just always been my character. People have tried to say I'm fake <laughs> or this or that, but I am that I am and if you don't like it, then People don't have to choose. AJ, even after that fight, it seems like some somehow casuals take your words out of miscontext. Some people even said you made an official heel turn as a bad guy, knowing that you're a likable guy and your reason is a likable guy. So it's very hard to have two likable guys on on a big platform. Yeah, yeah. So do you feel like you're playing like kind of the bad guy in this fight, knowing that and you reason had the underdog story? I think like we've all been underdogs. Okay. You know, so that's that's that is what it is. I've AJ. always had doubters. And uh, the bad guy thing I said is that I am that I am. I just think like I don't really say much. You keep on poking me and poking me into a corner, then I'm gonna bark and bite back. You know, I'm not I'm not that confrontatious type of person. So just keep myself to myself. But if you keep on prodding me and poking me, then I'm gonna spark back one of these days. Anthony? No, Lewis don't really reach out. Lewis has never reached out. I went to Jamaica to see Lewis when I first turned when I first wanted to turn professional, and he had plans for the heavyweight division. He had plans for what he wanted to do with myself, and I don't think they worked out of what I wanted to do, so I kind of didn't go down that route. And um, the only times I've ever heard of Lewis making contact is via um, the internet and stuff like that. Who, do, who does take time to call me and is not so much involved in the internet stuff is Vladimir Klitschko, nice. who calls me, advises me, um, and not really interested in internet, you know, like, not internet, what, what's the word when they boost you up? When they boost you up? Gas you up? Yeah, he doesn't yeah. want to do it for the internet. He doesn't because ah, he chooses. Yeah, he <laughs> yeah, he's not doing it for the cloud. He just, yeah, he just calls me like man to man. He's like, what's going on? This is what you need to do. And so the, those I appreciate comments that. created a firestorm over there in the UK. Why in specific do you think he, he's that a clown? Not for his boxing. The man's a beast when it yeah. comes to boxing. You know, he's got we got we got his pictures all up in my gym. Mm -hmm. wow. When it, when we when we talk about boxing, I respect that. But when we sit around the table as as men, I just talk about how I want to appreciate the younger generation when I'm done with boxing and sit back and appreciate talent and negotiation issues that some of these guys go through because I know they're going to go through it as well. But I just feel like when it's come to me, it's kind of different. Anthony's dodging, Anthony's not this, he needs to do that. And I'm just saying, why, is it, why are you always coming attacking me? Rather than reaching out like Klitschko and giving mm -hmm. a, a young man advice when I need so it. You felt like he was almost in a way... Um, yeah, I did feel like that, yeah. Picking on you. Yeah, I did like feel always. like that. And yeah. I'm not two-faced. Mm -hmm. So, as I say, you poke me, you poke me. Sooner or later, you're going to hear what I have to say about you. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just noticed it's an ongoing occurrence is that people always kind of talk, 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 talk. Then as soon as I say something, it's like, boom! <laughs> it explodes. So I told people, be a phone call. Yeah, between you. I don't really get involved in boxing circles like that, so I don't need to call Lennox. I've yeah. got my mentors and I've got my people. You know. I'm saying, if he reached out to you, about what though? Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. What, about, what is he going to reach out to? Huh? Yeah. There's no yeah. need. Like, what, if he wants to reach out, cool. But um, I ain't done anything wrong in this situation. You kind of poked me and poked me and poked me. Spoke about me as a person and stuff like that. So. Sooner or later, you're going to hear what my view is of how you treat me. Treat yeah, those how you want to be treated. You have for his boxing style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If he decided to reach out to you to give you some like advice on this, this second fight with Ruiz, would you be able to take it? In you know, I don't really take too much advice on, on the next fighters because gotcha. when I needed it, you know, when I truly needed advice on, on my way up and stuff like that, no one kind of reached out. It was only Rob from Boxing Point of View and Sean Murphy from my amateur gym that ever really helped me. Mm -hmm. When I was getting kicked off the Olympic team for all sorts of trouble <laughs> everyone turned their back on me kicked me out of boxing rob said nah trust me this one here so i've got the men that have guided me through i don't really want to start adding too much to the ingredients now. Boxing, when, when you dropped the reason the first fight yeah did you think the fight was over oh yeah yeah, yeah. Did, you That's what I said. did you lower your guard at that point no 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 my guard heightened i was like this is it which may have been my downfall so you know certain fighters have to change a few things on their way up you know it takes a true champion and a true, like, dedicated man to make the adjustments at top level. So I know I do have to make adjustments. Or I keep on doing the same thing and maybe find that same result happening 
over and over again in my career. So you, you went in for the kill investment. after knocking him down with yeah. the left hook, and then you landed a solid. I mean, probably the, right the hand. best right hands I've seen. Yeah, and he just mm, chewed it up at eight. Yeah, hands. what was your thoughts there? So now I, I just say I got a punch not straight down the line. I got a punch off the line with Ruiz because gotcha. it creates a different kind of angle and it creates a different kind of power. Ruiz kind of is like that. So any shots that you throw straight on, you kind of just can just flick him off by his forearm or his, uh, or his glove. But when you punch, so if I punch you there, or I punch you to the side here, it's just little things like that that I realize with Ruiz that I'll change up in the next fight. But the angle of the punch and the setting up of the punch has different effects the way you prepare it. Okay. How, how different so. Anthony, do you see the fight? He, being Anthony Ruiz, has said a lot since the win. <clears throat> has your opinion of him as a man changed slightly? Because he's this <laughs> smiling guy, you know, being nice to you. Now, all of a sudden, he's using robot emojis and, you know, yeah, yeah. fans are calling him the smiling assassin. Yeah, he is a smiling assassin. But as I said, he's done what he had to do. I think, like, as a fighter, you know, you don't, you don't, if it's your nature to be nice, so be it. But if it's not, then you've got to be that killer. And if Andy Ruiz is a killer, if he's a wolf under sheep's clothing, that's who we have to appreciate him for. So I know I'm getting in there to fight that wolf under sheep's clothing. So I see it for what it is now, and I see who he is and what he's about from the last fight. And now I've got to go in there and approach it head on. If you win, will you give him a rematch? No. <laughs> I'm going to fight some some guy from the pub. That's what the heavyweight division does, isn't it? Like, why am I, I said, why am I fighting all these solid contenders? For? <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to fight an easy fight after that. Is that a knock on Fury and his opponent? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you got to read between the lines, man. Would you revisit a fight with Big Baby Miller? Mm, yeah, I would do. I would do. You know, that's what I'm saying. It shows, right? God don't like ugly. You know, he had a great opportunity. You know, it may have been his time. Um, you just got to keep yourself clean. Someone's phone's ringing. You've got to keep yourself clean. You've got to do the right thing in this sport. And the people who have done the right thing get the right opportunity at the right time. So I would fight him again, but is it even worth, worth my time? That's the question. What did they Anthony, about, you know? how many times have you watched videos of the first fight? With yeah. Ruiz, yeah? Uh, yeah, with Ruiz. Up until what, the third round. <laughs> 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 what, what has been that process for yeah. you? What's watched? been the process for me? The whole thing, like, the whole, like, the style was wrong, you know, the style was wrong. Like, looking from an outside, if I'm looking at, from Rob's point of view, I've got to put myself in Rob's shoes. I'd be thinking, what is he doing, man? Mm. What am I, do you know what I mean? What do Take mean myself that? out of that body and look at like, what I've done everything wrong. Like what? Like what? Yeah. So you, you believe you, hold on, you defected from the, the game plan? Yeah, that's what I say, it's my own fault. That's why people talk about, oh, change trainer, or give me advice, give me this advice. I don't, I've got the best man beside me that's taking me there and that's going to take me all the way, you know? So it was me. I blame myself. I look myself in the mirror and I blame myself. So, I'll get it right. I'll get it right. And the one more, one more. suffering I'll lose a few more. Yeah, your first loss in the United States. Yeah. Would you revisit coming back to Manchester? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. I would do. I would do. Have you said that you felt you did something wrong? What exactly was it? You could, you could just see like the whole demeanor. I'm chilling. My neck hurt. My, I gave him the belts. My shoulders. Like it's a lot, man. It's a lot. So even like down to what happens outside of the ring, conversations. We're building this whole division up, carrying it on our back. Now I'm just like, chill, Ruiz, cool. That's why you asked me about who am I fighting next. I'm telling you, I'll fight who I want. Don't tell me about no Wilder wow. Fury. Take it how you want, but that's what I see what the heavyweight division is about. Up your name once again. That's what he's supposed to do though. This is the heavyweight division. If he isn't calling my name, I'm saying, Eddie, why am my name being a mention of Wilder's one of the best heavyweights in the division. I want to be alongside these guys. He wants to be alongside me. That's where we're all supposed to be as heavyweights. What do you think about Usyk finally entering the heavyweight division now? Alexander Usyk? Yeah. Good fight, good feet. Um, good fight, good feet. You know, uh, he's fought heavyweights before in the WSB, World Series of Boxing, um, the crossover between amateur and pro. It's a hard game to stay on top of. Is the preparation a lot easier this time around, being that you, majority of the time you only have to ask answer questions about one person? In your last That's point, from a you mental point of view. Mental point of view. But it's still heavy. We've done a lot of traveling in these last few days. I've had a lot of questions to ask myself in these last few weeks and months. But what's been a blessing for me is uh, just training. I said I'm already in a good place. I'm not training for a fight. I'm now training for life. I'm training for boxing. Boxing, 
Fuck save, fuck save. Did you ever what question about whether you would go straight to the rematch or if you would try to go for an interim fight first? It's quite interesting you ask that because the situation with like fighters when they're supposed to rematch straight away, the fans are calling for it. I could have been like, Ed, you know what? Between me and you, like, don't tell anyone. I'm not, I'm not ready for the rematch. <laughs> Do you know, it's like we make the calls at the end of the day. We speak to the to the governors, and then we uh, we go from there. But rematch, roll. Did when? Let's get done. Training People think I was out turning up in Miami. <laughs> <laughs> well, I swear to you. What, did you think I was going out in Miami? <laughs> I swear I'm disciplined. When it comes to, I keep my life simple and basic. I went down to South Beach at two o'clock for one on one Sunday for some lunch. Yeah, we spoke that day. Yeah, and I said two o'clock in the afternoon. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went down there for some lunch. That's the only thing I've done when I was in Miami, and uh, it was, was it's nice. In Miami, yeah. in America right now, it's good, man. In America, it's always good. Hey, Anthony, like how, how different is the rematch like going to be in your eyes? How different is it going to be? In what sense? How is it going to play out, I guess, mentally when you look at it? Like, how, how, how different? Smart. Like, you know, my hand ain't going to be here. Mm. You know, I'm not going to be moving around to my left where you can step over and throw his right hand. I just kind of assess him a bit better mm. and uh, prepare myself mentally for what, what's more, about to More come. technical style? Me? Yeah. Going, going for the kill less? No, the, the kill, the kill, the killer instinct hasn't left yet. Yeah. Um, it worked the first time to a certain degree. I was like 25, 30% of the way. So I'm going to build on that, not try and execute it at 30%. I'm going to build on that until it's at a point where I know there's no coming back. And if you knock him down early, would you not go for the kill the way you did in the third round the first time? Would you, would you play it a little more defensively? Maybe not in his, maybe not in close quarters. You know, see that one-two that he said landed? If I would have landed another three, four of those from a distance, it would have been better than trying to land an uppercut left hook again in close quarters. AJ, quickly, what do you think about Eddie Hearn promoting uh, KSI versus Paul Logan? Two celebrities. You know what it is? I think it's sick because he's making them, he could have promoted it from a point of view that's non-boxing, but getting their licenses, no head guard, rounds of boxing. What people have to realize is um, you have to put all eyes on boxing for us all to fry. So KSI and Logan Paul have got a bigger following than me and most of the heavyweights on this table combined. So if all those eyes are going to now watch me and watch my competitors and watch the sport of boxing is going to rise, I always say I'm for it. So good luck to them both. I hope they take it serious because they can earn some respect here. People look at them as like a joke now and they doubt them. But if they take it serious and they put on a good performance, people might scratch their head and say, hang on a minute, you know, this, this wasn't such a bad idea and you never know. YouTubers or, or or this type of um, event might happen more often, then it gives you another platform to cover as well. Thanks, Thank you, brother.